Come down off your throne and leave your body alone. Somebody's got to change. You are the reason I've been waiting here so long. Somebody holds the key. Hey everyone, welcome to MT Guitar. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're doing Can't Find My Way Home by Blind Faith, which was kind of a, a, a very brief super group between Steve Winwood, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and, and somebody else, excuse me, I'm not remembering the other name. In Eric Clapton's autobiography, he, he briefly talks about how they kind of named the band Blind Faith because they... Uh, they figured that this band wouldn't last, so they were having blind faith just to be a band. Uh, I think because their solo careers were kind of taking off, or I'm not sure exactly why they didn't think the band would last. But um, nonetheless, a beautiful song, probably their, their most well-known song. And I went ahead and learned the version that Steve Winwood played by his fireplace uh, like 10 years ago on YouTube. Just a beautiful version. I'm a massive fan of Steve Winwood. Kind of surprised I haven't done any Steve Winwood lessons. Um, you know, he's one of those guys who's just an all-around uh, monster musician. Uh, not only guitar and singing, but organ and, and, and piano and keyboards. He's also a producer, engineer. Um, so, you know, one of those guys who just can kind of do it all. But a massive fan of his voice. You know, he just, even, even now, he still has a great voice, which is amazing. So, um, this is just a really nice song for guitar. It's going to be in drop D tuning. It's a classic sort of verse chorus song. Uh, so once you get through the verse and chorus, you're pretty much done. Um, I'll, I'll post the uh, the chord melody on the Patreon as well if you're interested in that when I went to, which is actually a lot of fun. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and the thumbs up. All right, let's jump on in. Okay, so we're in drop D. Uh, now, the arrangement that Steve Winwood did on YouTube, he was actually in standard standard D tuning, so drop C. So that's pretty rare. Um, he, he did that for his voice because uh, 50 years later singing it, you know, he, he wanted to lower it, of course, for his voice. So it's kind of a lot to tune down to, to standard D and then drop C. So we're going to stay in standard tuning, drop D. That's the actual... Uh, tuning of the original studio recording. So I think that's that's the way to go. We're gonna start with this intro just like he did on the on the YouTube arrangement here. So when you ever whenever you're in drop D you kind of want to recalibrate your your chord vocabulary to these bass notes here. So this is the first chord here is a G and we want to not strum the first string. So it's gonna be fifth fret that's your G bass. You know, you mute the fifth string, and then the, the fourth, third, second strings are open, and you can barely mute the first string. You could also just avoid avoid the first string with your right hand. Whatever's whatever's clever, okay? And um, kind of keeps the beat going with uh, you know down, down, up, up, down, up. Now he he did this chord instead of. The, the sixth string, so I, I like that as well. So it's going to be four, four, two, O, oh, F sharp minor over C sharp. Now an E minor, and you're going to want that second fret on the sixth string there. 
and then a down on the D chord. And it's just going to be down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay? So let's run that. Here we go. Here we go. Now the the intro. Um, is is the same for the instrumental and the verse, right? So the intro, uh, I, I call it the hook. Uh, it's sort of that that main guitar riff, and he continues it while he's singing as well. So this is sort of the meat and potatoes of the lesson here. And this is where the, the bass is walking down, you know, quite beautifully. Okay. But, of course, we have a lot more work to do than just that. So, here's a C add 9. And we're going to just ignore the 4th string, just mute it with your, fifth, uh, with, your, with your middle finger there. And we're going to go... Okay, let's take it chord by chord. So that's 5th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st, 2nd. Go to a G over B, so second fret, fifth string. Get your pinky on the third fret, first string, and you're gonna go uh, fifth, third, first, second, third. So, all right. Now you want to keep the up and down thing going, so you're gonna be constantly going like this. I, you know, you could be, think of it as down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, up, up. All right, if that if that it messes you up, don't worry. But that's, you know, part of the trick about um, playing rhythm is you keep the up and down going. And this is a double time strumming feel, so it's like. It's as if I'm strumming the chords. Okay? So that's going to continue throughout the song. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Just don't think of it as individual notes, but as the notes we're hitting while we're strumming. Okay? Now a B-flat 6, go to that first fret. Same, same pattern with the right hand. Now a D over A, same pattern. Take that whole line, three, four, go. All right, good job, halfway there. Next chord is an F over si uh, F6, six nine. Uh, it doesn't look like an F, but you know, that would be a full F with this tuning, but he keeps this second string, third fret as a pedal tone. So that's kind of nice there. So anyway, uh, six, four, third, second, fourth strings. Then G. So we just go to fifth fret. Uh, all right. Now, before we move on from that, it's important to realize that the melody is basically on the F6-9, it's the third and second strings. So it's like, that's what you want to accent. And then on the G chord, fourth and second strings. The other notes are kind of filler. Okay. So that would be sixth string twice on the G, fourth, second, fourth. Now a D chord. Okay, so that would actually be, uh, let's see here. That's a nice little riff he does. So that's going to be 6th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st string open, 4th, 2nd, O to 2 hammer on the 1st string, 4th, 2nd, 4th, 2nd, 2nd, 4th, 3rd. Come down. So let's take that line. Here we go. Verse is just repeating that throughout, okay? Same exact picking pattern, um, but have some flexibility. And, and if it doesn't, 
if you don't hit every single note, that's fine, right? In fact, that's encouraged. You want to kind of have some variations that you naturally do. When we go to the chorus, all right, then, you know, we, we go to some different types of picking here. So we go to a G chord, and it's actually quite active, so it's like 6, 4, 3rd, 4, 3rd, 4th. A sus four, so here's the chord. We're gonna go fifth, fourth, third. Uh, sorry, fifth, third, second, fourth, third, fourth, and repeat. Okay. Notice how I'm always doing the up down thing in 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 a double time strumming feel. Okay, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. All right, now a D chord. Much the same as before, the, uh, the the fill, and then E minor seven. So we go to second fret with the middle finger. We go six third second fourth third fourth. Repeat. Now a G chord, just like the intro. that are not right just like I did <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself so then you would just go to back to verse chorus and hook and that's the song it's just a classic verse chorus and you know if you listen to the studio recording you'll notice that it's basically um, never repeating Steve Winwood made a beautiful acoustic arrangement that's what I transcribed that's pretty predictable but even if you didn't do that you'd still be playing the song the chords are the same in both the studio version and in the the live solo version, but the live solo version just has a nice predictable part. So that's what I, I taught you. Uh, we went kind of fast because um, sometimes being exact is overrated. So do your best if, if you really want to be exact, but if you, if, if you don't, you'll still be fine. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know.